these are all the books that I read in the month of January 2022. <laughs> Hello my friends, it's Bella and today I want to talk about all of the books that I read in the month of January, which were a total of 12 books. I did read quite a good number of good books even though I also found my most disappointing read of 2022, which you're probably thinking, Bella, it's only January. How come you found your most disappointing read of the year already? Trust me, trust me, it hurts. Before we get into all of the books that I read in January, I did want to say a very big thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. You've probably heard of Book of the Month if you've been here for a while or if you've been following other booktubers. Book of the Month is a super popular and fast-growing online book service for readers like you and me. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover books that they are bound to love. Their team vets hundreds of books to give us a monthly selection of new and early release titles so we can spend more time working on our yearly reading goal and less time researching. Book of the Month is risk-free so you can skip any month, any time, and you will not be charged. What I love about Book of the Month is that it helps me diversify my reading by introducing me to new genres and new books that I wouldn't normally pick up and in turn, it helps me find new favorites. You can get your first hardcover book for just $9.99 using the code BEMINE. Let's take a look at February's picks. The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. This is a psychological thriller about a therapist who lost her license because of her controversial methods. She tries to save the marriage of this golden couple who seem like they have it all, but as always, there's more than what meets the eye. Vladimir by Julia May Jonas, described as provocative, darkly funny, and wildly entertaining, this is the story of a professor whose husband at the same college is under investigation for his inappropriate relationships with his former students. Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black. With piercing insight and profound empathy, the author illuminates the lived experiences of Black fathers and queer sons through letters written by a Black father on his deathbed who's trying to make amends with his gay son. Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu. This is a historical fiction about war, migration, and the power of telling our stories. This book follows three generations of a Chinese family on their search for a place to call home. And finally, A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. With unforgettable characters, a fast-paced plot, and compelling world building, A River Enchanted is described as a house of earth and blood meets the witch's heart. As you can see, February's selection is insanely beautiful first and foremost and also extremely interesting and I can't wait to dig into them. Make sure to head to bookofthemonth.com to select your first hardcover book for just $9.99 using the code BEMINE. Without further ado, let's get into the books that I read in January. Let's go because they're a lot. Okay, so I started off my year reading a manga and this was actually a birthday present, so it was perfect. I read Full Metal Alchemist Volume 15. This, of course, if you've been here for a while, you know that Full Metal Alchemist has me on a chokehold. Um, <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist is one of my all-time favorite animes and manga and story and just everything. I feel like everybody knows what Full Metal Alchemist is about, but if you don't, catch up sweetie because you're missing out on an amazing story with beautiful characters and there's just so much to love about this story and I really want you to pick it up if you haven't. This was a 4.5 star. Yes, excellent, excellent. Perfect way to start the year. My next read was Eva Evergreen and the Cursed Witch by Julie Abe. This is the sequel to Eva Evergreen's Semi-Magical Witch and this this is giving me Studio Ghibli vibes. This is giving me Harry Potter vibes, especially in the second book. And we're following this witch called Eva Evergreen, but she struggles a lot with finding her inner magic. And because of that, she's kind of like ostracized from the witch community because she's not as powerful. So this is a story of this witch, Eva Evergreen, as she tries to prove to herself and to others that she's just as good as everybody else. And of course we have adventures, we have sidekicks, we have the friendships that we make along the way. It's such a heartwarming story 
and it definitely gives me Kiki's Delivery Service vibes in the best way possible. And I just love it. I loved it so much and I love what Julie Abe does with this world and these characters. It was just wonderful and that's why I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars as well. Then I read The Maid by Nita Prose, and this was categorized as a cozy murder mystery. So I was very excited to read this because I've never read a cozy mystery before. And I was like really interested to see what it was all about. Unfortunately, um, I was very disappointed by this. I feel like it was a very... When you're reading a murder mystery, you kind of want to be invested in the characters, invested in the outcome. You kind of want to like see how it's going to pan out. But the more that I read this, the less that I cared for these characters, the less of an impact they were having on me. And overall, I was just very bored. I feel like the character personalities and the relationships were just overdone or underdeveloped and not enough to interest me. If what you're looking for in a murder mystery is mystery, you're not gonna find it here. This was just not what I was expecting, but I am open to trying out more cozy murder mysteries because I feel like this doesn't define that genre. So if you have any good recommendations for cozy mysteries, please leave them down below. The next book that I read was Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan. So if you don't know, Daughter of the Deep is a retelling of the classic 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and we're following the granddaughter or like the descendant of the main character of the classic, which is Captain Nemo. I really enjoyed the twist and turns that Rick Riordan gave to this retelling and it made me really interested in picking up the source material. Even though the pacing of the book was very quick and very fun and engaging, it took me about 200 pages to feel invested with the characters and the story. This is the 200 page mark. So it took me more than halfway through for me to actually start enjoying the book and to actually like root for these characters. So even though it was a fun time, I still ended up giving this three stars because I just kept comparing it to the other Uncle Rick books that I've read and adored and that live inside of me forever. Would I recommend it to everyone? I don't think so. <laughs> the next book that I read, can you can you see it? Can you see it? I, mm, I kind of miss having this in my currently reading list because it's just so big and I miss holding it in a sense. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen my dedicated video for this one. <laughs> it kind of popped off if I do say so myself. <laughs> War and Peace. Hi, um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I read War and Peace, and I mean, <laughs> I, I spoke about this book for 30 minutes in a dedicated reading vlog that I have of me finishing and discussing and talking about my feelings about War and Peace, so if you're interested to know more, I will leave that up here and also down below if you're interested. I did give this 3.5 out of 5 stars and I don't know, I don't know. I finished War and Peace. I've been called so many names on my comments of that reading vlog because right as I went off on Tolstoy for being so repetitive, I proceed to repeat, repeat myself, myself over and over, and over, and again. over again. And then and over then and over, over and again. Over again. <laughs> yeah, I finished War and Peace. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna put it away before I keep on repeating that, but hey, I finished War and Peace, so there you go. This book stresses me out just looking at it. I really wish I didn't have to talk about this. I'm not exaggerating when I say that whenever I look at this book, I get triggered. I used to love the color yellow and now it just makes me want to die. And it's because <laughs> Yolk has a yellow cover. So now every time that I look at the color yellow, I think about Yolk. And every time I think about Yolk, I want to die. <laughs> if you haven't guessed by now, this is my most disappointing read of 2022. I've read one star books better than Yolk. I do go on a whole rant review on one of my vlogs as well because this book made me want to go illiterate. And maybe I did because after this, it, it took about two weeks for me to pick up another book. <laughs> so if you don't know, I actually don't want to tell you. Like, <laughs> um... I don't want to talk about this book anymore. I feel like it's wasted enough of my time. I just wanted to mention it so that you know that I read this and I suffered through it. I don't even want to touch it. I feel like I'm getting an allergic reaction. 
So let's move on. I did read one audiobook for the month of January and that was How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. Now this, this has a really nice cover. It has a pink and the title as well. It's like really engaging. It's like, oh, okay. I love murderous girl bosses that girl boss too close to the sun. But this is this is not one of those cases. Our main character was so boring. In How to Kill Your Family, we're following our main character, Grace, who is the daughter of this affair between a millionaire and this poor woman. And because of that, the father doesn't really give any support to Grace. And when the mother gets really sick, she asks for help, but the father is just like, I don't care. So when her mother dies, Grace promises to avenge her death by killing her whole family. And by her whole family, she means like all the rich people that could have helped but didn't. That sounds insane. That sounds so fun, so cool. Like this girl boss going around killing rich people with no conscience, no morale. That sounds amazing. That sounds iconic, but it wasn't. It was repetitive. It was boring. This is advertised as like this funny, dark humor type of book. It was so overdone and it was like trying so hard to be funny. Like, I see you trying to be funny. And it just made me cringe. It was trying so hard to be good. And because of that, it just ended up being super repetitive and super boring and the pacing was off. And then the ending, it just like ruined everything. Like it was like, page after page of nonsensical monologues and it was just it was like it was trying to be something that it could never be and because of that i gave how to kill your family two stars reading that book after reading yolk it was like okay maybe i'm just not meant to be a reader this year and then i went and picked up um alone with you in the ether <sighs> listen this book this book um, came at the right time. You know those books that you just, you when you first pick them up, you think nothing of it. You think they're just gonna be any other book that you've read before. But this book kind of, I feel like it was sent. I mean, it was sent to me by, by one of you guys, but it was sent to me in the spiritual sense. I feel like somebody was like, girl, pick this up now, you need this. And I really did need this. I feel like this book does the perfect job of putting all of my emotions into words and making them pretty. This book takes all of my pain and makes it into art. And I just, I went through so much reading this book and I loved every single second of it. As it says right here, this is a love story between two people called Reagan and Aldo. And this is a very character-driven book. There's honestly really no plot. We're just following these two characters as they meet, as they fall in love, and inevitably as they fall apart. <laughs> it wouldn't be a love story if there wasn't any heartbreak. So Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake, I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars because it just, it deserves nothing less. I said what I said. The next book that I read was for my Patreon buddy read and that was Iron Widow. Look at her. Hi, let her take the center stage. It's what she deserves. Iron Widow takes the best elements of fantasy, sci-fi and historical fiction and puts it into this book. Plus we have a polyamorous relationship which just really buttered my croissants. I loved spending time with these characters because they're so fleshed out. Sometimes the writing felt like I was watching a movie inside of my head. I fell in love with the beautifully morally great characters that the author gave us, the world building, the pacing, the setting, the whole just everything about this book was so well done and I loved every second of it and I also loved reading it with my Patreons. I do have an exclusive reading blog for this if you're interested. The link is down below, you know what to do. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars as well. The next book that I read was another Uncle Rick book and that was The Tower of Nero which is the fifth and final book in the Trials of Apollo series and this was such a bittersweet experience because Apollo, the Trials of Apollo isn't necessarily my favorite series, but I don't know how much I should say since this is the fifth book. I don't want to spoil you if you haven't read it or if you're planning on reading it. But let me just say some of my favorite characters from the Riordan verse come to play in this book and it was beautiful. It was perfect. The highlight of the book, they made everything 
so much better because they were together and seeing them together was everything to me. Like we've waited so long to see them together and just seeing them living their lives apart from the original books and seeing them thriving and being happy. It was, yeah, it was good. It was it was good. <laughs> I never really connected with Apollo and Meg. We're following them as they're fulfilling the prophecies and like trying to save the world and everything. I didn't 100% connect with them. And because of that, like you can't really give a book five stars just because of the side characters. So I did give this a three out of five stars because even though it was enjoyable and I did have fun overall, it just felt like a three star. <laughs> okay, so this next one, I picked up on a whim because I just, I was feeling very manga-ish and I didn't know what I wanted to read. This came very highly recommended. So I just wanted to give it a try and I just wanted something quick and fun and breezy. So I picked up <laughs> Spy Family Volume 1. Okay, so in Spy Family, we're following a family. <gasps> I know, I hope I didn't spoil anything, but this is, not your average, not your typical type of family because the father is a spy, the mother is an assassin, and the daughter is a telepath. She can read minds and she's also the most adorable human being in the world and I want to protect her at all costs. Look at them. I love them with every being of my soul. I just loved every second of this, honestly. Like, it made my day. It made me laugh so much. I don't think I've ever laughed as much as I did reading a manga. The illustrations as well, and the fight scenes, and like, it's just, it was everything. And I can't wait to continue on with this series because I just know I'm going to have the best time of my life. So, of course, I gave it this 5 out of 5 stars. It's what it deserves. Nothing less. And he's so hot. I'm sorry, but he's, he's like, he's a man. You know what I mean? <sighs> I need to take a deep breath. I literally, honestly, I, I hope I dream of him tonight. <laughs> the last book that I read in the month of January was The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This, I actually wasn't planning on reading this on January either, but I was doing a reading sprint with one of my friends and when I started this book, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna read for 30 minutes and then we can just do something else. When the 30 minutes were up, I was like, can we do another 30 minutes? Um, and then I just kept on asking for more time because I honestly couldn't put this book down. When I tell you that I read this in one sitting, like I didn't, e I didn't stand up from my bed for a single second. I just read this, I devoured this and I loved it. It was beautiful, it was stunning. <laughs> This is the story of Anna and Quan, and Anna is kind of going through a life-changing prognosis. She's recently found out that she is autistic, and she's trying to wrap her mind around what all of that means. And then we have our male protagonist, which is Quan, and he has his own set of problems and his own set of existential crises that he needs to get through. But together, they're just, you know, they're each other's rock. This does deal with a lot of heavy topics, but I feel like where I am right now, again, I just feel like this book was beautiful and I feel like it made me feel all the right type of emotions and the romance. It was just like, I kept on leaving little post-its throughout because I just had so many <laughs> thoughts and so many emotions. So I just wanted to write them all down, but I, yeah, this was just a really beautiful book. Do be prepared and know that this isn't like a lighthearted romance. This is definitely a dark book that deals with really heavy subjects, but I still think it's worth it. I think the message is really important and the story is really beautiful and the way that the characters develop is very organic and very natural. And I just, I loved it. I loved it. So those are all the books that I read in the month of January. I do have one DNF that I recently decided to just not finish because it wasn't making me happy. And every time that I looked at it and thought of the fact of picking it up, I was like, nah, sis, this ain't, this ain't for us. I feel like this author has been mentioned quite a lot already in this video. So it's kind of sad that I'm DNFing one of his books, but I had to make the executive decision of DNFing The Cursed Carnival and Other Calamities by a lot of Riordan authors and Rick Riordan himself. See, here, the thing, <laughs> the thing here is, here's the thing. These short stories 
are based on source material that I haven't read and probably won't read. Like you see all the books that different authors come out with, like Arusha and that's the only one I know. I feel like in order to enjoy these stories, you have to have read the source material where they come from because it kind of just like throws you into the mix. It doesn't really explain anything. So for someone like me who hasn't read all of the Rick Riordan Percents books, I don't know who these characters are. I don't care for them. I don't care for these adventures if I don't know what the stakes are. I tried to push through, um, <laughs> but it just wasn't working for me. I just don't think it was worth it. I do feel like maybe someone that has read the, these books will enjoy these short stories, but for me personally, I just couldn't get to them. And I don't really care to read like 10 plus books just to enjoy this collection of short stories. So yeah, I DNF'd it. What can you do? <laughs> These were all the books that I read in the month of January. You can't see the bottom two, but it's okay, they don't matter. <laughs> let me know which ones you've read or are planning to read, and also let me know how your reading month went. I would love to discuss it down below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all so very much. I hope you're having a lovely day whenever you're seeing this, and I will see you next time. Hey, Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.